the same uh, potency, you know, I guess for lack of a better word. Uh, the, the, just because of the newness of the first season, you know, and how every single thing, it was like, it was just so new, everything about it. And, uh, and really feeling sort of at the end of every week that, because you didn't know, you know, you didn't know if the hammer was going to come down and, you know, if the show did, was going to do well. And so, do you know, but to think after every episode, you know what, if it ends here, that's cool, man, because I, I, I really got to be a part of something that I personally uh, feel glad to be a part of and to, and to have that feeling uh, sort of fresh um, really makes the first season in particular a very special segment of time for me. Ryan, could you maybe just talk a little bit, I don't have that much time, but talk about season three with the Carver. That seemed to just generate a lot of headlines and stuff, and a lot of people, you know, had a lot of strong reactions to that season. What do you, looking back now, what do you think about it? Well, it was, it was interesting. I mean, to answer your question and that question, my favorite seasons were season two. You saw an emphasis from that, and last season, which was our highest rated season, which I was shocked by that in the fourth year that was the highest rated season that we did. Um, you know, after season two, we had had such huge success. It was a really big hit. We had just won the Golden Globe. Um, we had had a lot of magazine covers. You know, everybody was sort of uh, doing really well. And you're going to, there's no way that you can win after a level of success of that nature, which I realized in the middle of season three, um, because that was sort of the Carver year. And I thought, well, instead of let's, let's shake it up a little bit. Let's do something. Let's take a character that is very sort of gothic and dark. And to me, it was really, there was no difference between that character and a plastic surgeon. I was fascinated. But I think for the audience, it became very dark and very um, too scary. I know a lot of people who had loved seasons one and two couldn't watch it anymore. It was very violent. Um, I personally was in a much darker place in my life. And I think you write what you know. Um, so it reflected that. I know the cast hated it. And, then, and, and the reason why is because it had always been this very show about this family. And in season three, we took an outside character who really was calling the shots and brought them in. And it did, as Dylan has said, become like policewoman. You know, with them sort of solving this mystery. And it would be, I mean, I loved a lot of episodes in that season. Um, but, you know, and it did very well in the ratings, and that the, the season finale of season three was the highest rated episode, I think, in the history of the network when he was unmasked. But for season four, it was really hard to sort of say, okay, let's bring it back to its roots and let's you know, rebirth it again. Can we even do that? And we did. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I loved last season. And yeah, me too. yeah, me too. Because I it agree. became about the family again. These, mm -hmm. It became about these guys, all of them. I wasn't a big fan of season three. <clears throat> and then you kind of get to a place where you're concerned that, you know, maybe you'll be doing this thing that, I don't know, you're not enjoying yourself anymore, that you don't like, or you're not happy with the work that you're putting out there and all that kind of stuff. And I got to say, you know, hats off to you and you, um, because I felt like last season was our best. I felt like last season took it, took the show that we started with in the pilot and continued through the, for the first two years pretty well, I think, particularly, yeah, particularly the first two years, and just then took it to another level, I felt like. But and you, you, I think it's hard to, after not feeling like you've done something that well, to go back and, particularly with all the same people, and to go back and, and say, okay, look, maybe it wasn't the best season that we did, but let's, let's do something even better. And I remember saying to each other at the beginning of season four, remember, all of us kind of felt like, all right, let's like really go for it this season, you know? Mm -hmm. and, but but uh, that, that is a cultural thing that you see in our culture that, you know, I, you don't know until you're in the middle of it, that when you have big success, you will be brought to heel. The media does that to you. The fans do that to you. I mean, it, you can name every huge TV show that there has been. You've seen it this past season with Lost after it's sort of, it sort of hits a huge zenith in season two and then people suddenly attacking it. We, that happened to us. And then it's interesting because then you become an underdog and I think you either sink or swim and you mm -hmm. say, okay, are we gonna be four seasons <coughs> and out or are we gonna go six, seven <coughs> seasons? And I loved the cast and the crew and I felt a huge responsibility as I know the writers did to sort of reinvent the show and bring it back to what it was but switch it a little and mm -hmm. it worked. I, think. I thought last season was a great season. Yeah, and that's yeah. a tough task. I mean, the way that you and the writers pulled that out last year, just the quality of scripts 
week to week to week to week was remarkable. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to have the, cu the culture and the country say, we love you, we love you, we love you, we really hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to go, it, it's very difficult to go from, <clears throat> I'll give you an example, to go from an A rating in a magazine and then third season, middle of it, go to a D because they don't, it's like, what? It, it makes you really sort of um, have to figure out what you want to do as an artist and not to be sucked up into that thing. And that happens in success. It certainly happened to me and I think it happened to the show. And so then you just get back to, let's just tell the stories about our people that we love. And that's what we're doing in the fifth season as well. And to your credit, the fans came back in season yeah, four. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I don't yeah. think they ever left, really. Yeah. But we I think that they were kind of yeah. hanging on. Well, we did something different in season four, too, which I had resisted for a long time, which, you know, a lot of very famous people love the show. It's a big industry show. Um, and I would get calls, can I be on it? You know, I don't want to do that. And then I thought, well, why not? Why can't, you know, you don't want to be the love boat. But <laughs> <laughs> if Catherine Deneuve calls you and says, I love the show, will you write a part for me? I mean, who the hell am I to say no to that? That's weird to me. So but we, it was also, all the characters fit perfectly. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they, none of them looked like they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? And also typical to the show, you know, what I love to do is I had a meeting with Brooke Shields, for example, and I said, you know what, what no one would buy, expect you to be as a sexually compulsive psychiatrist? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, would you, I mean, so if you, we were able to switch it around, you know? The same thing, <laughs> the same thing happened to Rosie. Um, I said, I want to write something that no one would expect you to be, which is a heterosexual woman who wears clothes like Joan Collins, and she's like, I don't think I could do that. And I'm like, yeah, you can. <laughs> so, we, you know, it sort of it twisted it on its ear, but I do think the reason why we did so well last year was the parade of iconic people who were interested in being on Larry. the show. Larry Hagman. Larry, great, great just, people. what a great guy, and how brilliant was he. Mm. But just fantastic actors like Dink, Peter Dinklage, who you know, mm. I met, I said, I love you. I would love <laughs> to write a role for you. Will you do this? And he was like, really? Okay. Just like really cool people that are my Great character. obsessions that I've always been interested in. And that's what I did last year and the writers did. And it worked, thankfully. And we're going to do more of that this year because once you start getting to hang out and smoke with Catherine Deneuve, you're like, I love this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but that's, I think, why the show really sort of, and I think the stories were, again, it was about the guys, it was about the family, it was about, you know, Matt and Kimber and Liz and everybody. <clears throat> and, it, it was, and a lot of sex. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I care about at the beginning of each season. I call him up, I say, am I doing, having a lot of sex? <laughs> oh, yeah. Then Go I don't care about anything else. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's un well, we have to wrap it up. It sounds like a perfect way to end an evening. And thanks, everybody, for coming. <laughs> okay. Thank you.